as well. Yeah, I think the the factors that that could have been changed. That well, I, I don't think there was anything that could have been changed that was within our control. Um, you know, having maybe more time to dedicate um to to testing and and to using it and and you know being able to feedback in in, in a timely manner. I think. Um, probably would have helped, but I think you know everyone was sort of being pulled in different directions, and um, so I think that was that's something that I would change, but I don't think that was sort of within anyone's control at the time, really. That's a very very true point, that Michelle. It's just being pulled in so many different directions, putting so many plates, and time is valuable. So yeah, no, mm. true. That makes sense. Thank you. And just. Um, how well did you feel that the platform fitted into maybe the wider organisational priorities of Wirral from both the CERNA and the Wirral perspective? Well, in terms of um, PCNs and, you know, the current priorities, um, you know, we're working towards the requirements of the DES. So, um, you know, the big thing for pharmacy and medicines optimization is SMRs. Um, and the, then the other big thing within that is being able to prioritize patients effectively. So, um, you know, in the absence of really having a, a good way of doing that before this, it, you know, it, it completely sort of slots in, um, to, to filling that gap, um, that was there. So, so it, it, it does, um, it does fit in well to, to our priorities within within Wirral, but also, you know, it's what we sort of need to do from a national sense in terms of meeting the DES for the PCN. And from CERNA, did you feel that there were certain wider organisational priorities that you were meeting when designing this product rather than just focusing in on Wirral and the, the clinical pharmacists, if this makes sense? Uh, I can I, I can add to that. Um, I think we 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 started and, and Rich mentioned this. We we looked at this. I want to say back in December 2019, where just Rich and I initially came up with a just it was very much a brainstorming. But I think what really triggered the or got it going a lot more further from that was um, like in a, in a nutshell probably COVID. Um, and I know in the sense where we we. Everybody was working from home. We were starting to look at, obviously, priorities changed for all of our clients. And uh, what we were looking at that time was trying to see uh, how else we could, you know, what are the things that we could do internally to, to and that makes sense, but also that will apply because of all some of the national directives that are coming through things like the DES framework. And, and I think definitely this, this picked up a lot more speed um, at that time because of the fact that, yes, clients were going through COVID, they were going through um, a huge demand, and, and therefore, you know, some of the existing um, priorities for, for projects, for digital projects, were even uh, within the world, but that, that they had naturally paused because of the environment. Uh, this is something that definitely picked up speed, and, and then we knew we were able to take this um, once things settled down a little bit more. And then probably like separate to that, also just from kind of an internal analytics team in terms of priorities, having kind of done this work and building out a kind of system to person scalable framework around medicines optimization fits into into the team priorities where we've been kind of trying to work in a more of a framework manner. That's great. Thank you. And just... To, as a final point, how do you individually each think that the platform has instigated change in the wider medicines optimization field? Um, I think from our point of view, um, it's just made the process much slicker, easier. Um, we can very quickly find patients that we want to review. Um, and we know that the information that we're getting is is taken from across, you know, all the sources. Um, and and yeah, we can just hone in really quickly on those patients. I mean, I think when I did the pilot with with my 15 patients, I um, I made a, a number of interventions, like quite important ones, and it would take me quite a long time if I just ran a search for patients and I was just methodically going through them. Um, you know, it would probably take me quite a long time to find a number of patients to make, you know, to 
to make that number of interventions. Um, so I think that, yeah, from my point of view, that it's just made it so much quicker and easier to find patients that, that need our support. That's, that's um, yeah, linking in with that, Michelle, it, it's certainly the efficiency. Um, and then when, when you kind of start playing around with the filters, it then makes you realise, oh, hang on, this is a, this is a particular uh, cohort of patients that we can easily identify, specifically when you start making interventions in the first lot of patients. So, um, yeah, efficiency and then identify, easily playing around with identifying patients at risk. That's great, thank you. And maybe from more of a Cerner perspective, how do you feel that the platform has instigated change, particularly maybe as you look to scale up? So I, I guess we can probably, because we can mention the fact that uh, that we're going to be, well, we have developed uh, an additional sort of library built on the same framework, um, working with the world again um, around um, the prescribing of um, antibiotics for um UTIs um, and sort of antimicrobial um, stewardship. So that's a sort of another area. And I think that shows that, you know, that this is a scalable framework that we can then use for other, you know, areas of meds optimization that aren't just um, structured medications reviews. Um, we're also seeing a lot of interest in this product, also this solution, um, you know, across other um, clients as well. I mean, obviously we did a lot, as Miriam was referring to earlier, did a lot of early engagement across not just Wirral, but to NCL, to um, Lewisham and some of our areas as well. But we've we've seen, for example, with new clients coming on board, um, we're talking about our, our work in this space. They're really, really interested in it and see it's kind of a, a priority area for themselves as well. So I think um, it's a, a solution that we'll hopefully see scale up both, you know, with other um, libraries such as the UTI stuff, but then also in other areas of the country as well. Um, as you know, there are those incentives there attached to the DES contract, but also I think there's a real um, motivation within um, the clinical pharmacist community as well to, you know, use digital tools like this to, to help, um, you know, manage um, their practice um, in, in this area. Just, that's what I've seen, I suppose, in a, in an informal way, anecdotal way. Um, just one small thing to add, um, in the wider context of it, like the, the government's push to um, adopt population health management, this is a great example of <clears throat> it on a small scale, um, you know, using the example of Wirral, but it can be easily, like you've mentioned, scaled up to other uh, specialties or other workflows um, in a more proactive way to identify high risk patients versus the kind of reactive medication reviews of after a patient has had an incident happen to them. So this is a great example of being uh, proactive in patient care management rather than reactive. So that's also something that's going to be a great benefit for the long term implementation of other um, other registries and systems. Yeah, uh, uh, so, so I couldn't, couldn't agree any, any more. But I think just the other thing is just uh, pharmacists are so used to working in systems that either don't talk to each other or looking for information, spending so much time looking for information. I want to say back in the day it was faxing to request information and waiting at a fax machine to get something back. And, and I know we've moved on from that, but, but even still, you know, and making clinical decisions when you don't necessarily have all, all the information, it, it, it have, a, you know, in one place or, or really sifting, um, it, it's just difficult to provide that quality of service that is guaranteed for every patient. And, uh, you know, I think this, this, this is, I know we look at SMRs and, and we're looking at this from a population health level, but the ability to look at other aspects, holistic care, things like uh, air pollution, things like housing, things like mental health data, and then seeing whether that actually has an impact to the um, to the medications that somebody actually takes or the activity, uh, you know, from a healthcare utilization perspective that somebody actually, uh, uh, represents over a year. I think th this is one tool that showcases that in a fairly, from, as, as Olivia mentioned, from a system level to place to PCN to GP practice and then really down to that individual. Um, and, and that's something at the moment that honestly speaking, I've not seen, um, at, at place or, or I've just not experienced, uh, so far as a practicing pharmacist. 
out of interest, obviously, this project, this intervention at the moment is very focused on the clinical pharmacist delivering 